And now it is my pleasure once again to bring in Kathleen Garrido to chat with us, the interior designer, home stager, the, the uh, what do we say, how do we put it, the uh, uh, exporter. She left California to go to America. Oh, I'm sorry, to Florida. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Wonderful. How are you doing out there? Is it uh, nice and cold and rainy in Florida like it is here in Southern California? You know, a little chilly. It's about 74 today. <laughs> oh, oh, that's that's pretty bad. A little chilly. It's about 74. We'll have to, I think, I've, Josh, don't we have that violin that we had for, for Kathleen here somewhere? <laughs> yeah, the little one, the little one. 74 degrees. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> and I see that uh, your governor is still fighting with our, our with Mickey Mouse. So that's a, that's all good stuff. So what part are you in South Florida? Or are you uh, up north or where are you at? Yeah, I'm in South Florida. I'm over by Del Rey and Boca Raton. Oh, okay. So that, so you're not, you're, are you far from Disney? Uh, probably three hours. Three hours. Okay. So not too far. Not, not too far. Not like us here about 15 minutes, but that's a whole <laughs> a different, different world. Yeah. So, so, you know, on um, Monday, our largest sponsor is Geneva Financial. I'm sorry, Tuesday. It was, well, Monday and Tuesday, both they were our largest sponsors. But I'm going to just throw in here from Monday. And we put out a newsletter every week. And Monday's newsletter, like it is generally the first part of the year, it says the one of the headlines was Pantone's 2023 color of the year is Viva Magenta. And Kathleen says? I'm hearing a little differently, but you know, <laughs> everybody's got their own opinion of what is hot and what is not. Uh, Magenta is a very pretty color. You know, we had the dark hunter green um, in the past. So I could just imagine if I went and painted my house, Viva Magenta. That uh, would be, yeah, an accent or a powder room, possibly. Oh, <laughs> yeah, either that or a bunch of eggs coming from my neighbors, one or the other. Yeah, it's pretty bold. Pretty bold. Yeah, that would, that would be kind of crazy. So, so you know, and, and I used to be in the import export business. We had to watch the colors of the year, but we had to start watching them earlier because, you know, it's kind of hard if they come out and say in January that that's the color of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, we couldn't get our imports in from the Far East that quickly. So we had to look at this stuff early. But, you know, what are, what are you seeing as, uh, as, colors that we're going to be looking for this year? You know, I'm not seeing a ton of colors. I mean, talking about what you just said, how do we, you know, how do we know the colors ahead of time instead of chasing them, like you just said, is, you know, I'm always inspired by Italy. And when you look at their home design um, and fashion, that's usually something that comes out a couple of years out. I am seeing a lot of um, maybe a pop of a bold color, whether it's like a gray navy, a gray pink, just something that's soft and not as bold. Or a lot of homes now we're doing just muted, very natural tones, um, very, you know, maybe it's a light gray with a dark gray and a cream, just very light colors. So now that you're over there, now, you know, you, you've kind of uh, done some, some moving around. Yes. So I, I, I noticed that British accent or, or Brooklyn accent, one or the other. Well, it's my old New York accent that has come back. <laughs> okay. So the, well, that's because half of New York has moved to Florida because they don't want to deal with the Florida or the New York. Uh, we're not going to go down that road. Right. But when I, when I, again, when I'm going back to my import export days, the popularity kind of started in the New York area. Then it, you know, in, in the, the Northeast, actually, moved to the West Coast. It, it, it skipped the flyover states and then filled in between the Midwest and the South. Where does Florida fit in? Are they, are they a, a leading indicator or are they come down the road or how does that work? My, my take on it, being here a year and a half as far as the, like the design industry is, um, you know, it's Florida Bold Miami. And the one twist that I am excited about bringing here to Florida is toning it down a little bit and bringing my California coastal in, uh, which my clients are loving me. And that's why they're hiring me is that they love my website. They love the Instagram. Um, they just like that nice soft feel. They want to be able to come into their homes and feel like they're at peace. It's very, you know, they can, it's restful. Um, it's less clutter. You know, we're not doing as much clutter as we did back in the eighties. It's, it's minimal, but minimal with a warmth to it. 
how to start cold modern. Does that make sense? Well, for somebody that has no taste, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but so when you were when you were with us last, maybe a couple maybe a couple of visits ago, maybe uh-huh. you were talking about that you know it was taking you know a lifetime to get furniture and accessories and things like that. Is is that settled settled down a little bit, or is it still taking forever? So that has all settled down. However, I'm starting to see another slowdown in random stuff, but I don't see it in everything. So when I order materials, materials are coming in either right away or, you know, four to six weeks out. Uh, Cabinetry is what's taking a little bit more time. It's probably about 12 weeks out, and that's throughout several cabinet makers here in Florida. Um, but I'm not seeing it as bad as what it was where we couldn't get sofas for a year or a bedroom set for a year. We're getting things in quicker. But, we don't have to sit there and, and sleep on the floor quite as long. No, you don't. But cost on everything, of course, we know has gone up substantially between uh, furniture, materials. And are you seeing the same type of uh, delays on, on the West Coast as well as in Florida? Because I know you have, you're a bicoastal. Yes, I am. Um, yeah, I'm kind of seeing the same. Not really, really uh, delays. Like when I order things and I fly into California to do an install, nothing holds us up. Everything's in. So. A little better there. Yeah, it's not as bad. Continuing our, ca- our conversation with Kathleen Garrido. KG, was it, tell me the name of the company, Kathleen, so I get it right. Yes, it's KG Interior Designing. KG and, and the website? Is www.kginteriordesign.com. Ah, pretty simple. That way, even I can remember that. And Instagram, you can follow us on KG Inspires. KG Inspires. Yes. Nice. So, are you seeing, being that you are, you actually deal in a couple of luxury areas? Uh huh. Are you seeing people, you know, not using them as much, or are they still using them quite a bit? As far as what? Usage, selling, are they are they getting ready to sell? Are they maybe airbnb along the, or, or, or short-term rentals? Are you seeing any of that? Or are they just holding on to them and, and you know, still the, the growth area in that? In that in A lot market. of my clients that I'm working on their properties right now are all moving here. So they're from all over the country. Or a lot of them, it's just their getaway slash snowbirds. You know, they'll come down during the winter. Some don't even come down during the winter. They come down when they can have a weekend off. And so we're just remodeling a lot of these places that they just bought. Did you did you find many of them were buying them because of work conditions or are they buying them because they could? Buying them because they can. Yeah, that uh, seems to be the, the scenario. Yeah. I want to chat with you a little bit about a, a topic. A, it, it, and it's a, a – unfortunately, one of the things that we – end up doing on Ron Siegel Radio is warning about scams. Yep. And I'm glad you brought this to my attention because there's so many people that, you know, there's so many scammers out there. And and when the economy starts tightening up, it seems like the scammers come out of the woodwork. Yep. Tell me a little bit about what you're seeing with, uh, because I I know you do a lot of, of construction work and, and, remodeling and and directing traffic here Mm -hmm. what are some of the rules of things that are that i should play by if i'm thinking about you know i've had some friends that have had had big big pool uh, installations done and you know they they gave deposits and somehow by the time they gave the very last of the money yep work stopped yeah, and that's a very big issue right now here in South Florida, even in my development, where they gave them all this money. The business is like thriving for these pool companies, and they're up over their head, and then they're robbing Peter to pay Paul so that they can pay for this project, and they're running out of money. And so what I would say to everybody, regardless if you're doing a new pool or if you're doing any kind of home construction and you're just gonna hire a GC to start off first, which is a general contractor, Um, I would recommend that you get a referral from somebody that you've seen the work from. And then once you get that information, you get their general contractor's license. And if you live in the state of Florida, you can go on the DBPR, which is the um, Department of Business and Professional Regulations. Or in the state of California, you can go on the CLSB, which is the Contractor State License Board. 
You can put in their general contractor's license. They, it has a ton of information, whether there's complaints, if they're actually licensed, it will show how much insurance they carry, if they have employees or do they just have tradesmen. It will give you a plethora of information so that before you sign a contract, you know, you have a lot of information on that person. Now, some of the scams that we had here in Florida was that the general contractor acting as a general contractor, he said he was, but what tipped me off was I didn't see a number on his card. So he did not have any kind of contract with the clients. Well, if you don't have a contract between somebody and you go to sue or whatever, there's no, there's no information. There's nothing binding. So he contract. said, she said. Exactly. So make sure you have a signed contract and you read through that contract on what they're responsible for. My other thing on there is my clients will say, well, we're paying 250000 for the whole remodel. And I always tell them, hang on a second. What is your cost that they're paying for for the materials, meaning countertops, tile for the floor, wood floor, tile for the shower? What is your allotment? And they'll say, huh, I don't see it there. I said, well, then that's not everything that's included. Or they'll say, well, he's allowing me $5 per square foot. $5 per square foot back in the 70s was probably perfect, but in today's world, it's probably 15, 18, 25, or 30 on an average for any type of material. So yeah, he can give you $5 per square foot, but at the same time, you still have out of pocket, you know? So when you talk about $5 a square foot, are you talking about like flooring or is that um, countertops? It could, be, or? It, could be tile, it could be tile, could be backsplash. Um, also for the slabs, they might say, I give you a $1,500 allowance. Most slabs today are over two grand. Wow. So you really have to make sure you get all your ducks in a row before you start the process and sign contracts. That's my total recommendation. That's why a lot of clients hire me. My referral clients hire me is because I have a plethora and a team that I trust and I get all that upfront cost for them. So they're not blindsided with any additional cost. The so only why would you have an allowance? I mean, my guess is, you know, if, if I was going out to, to hire a, to have a pool done or have a remodel done, uh -huh. I'm going to be going out there and I'm saying, okay, this is what we're looking to do. Mm -hmm. And obviously if it's an investment property, I get a vote, but if it's my own residence, I get no votes. My wife's going to say, okay, this is the flooring I want. This is the countertop I want. This is the uh, backsplash or whatever. Right. And she's going to be real specific about those things. Correct. So why would there be an allowance for something instead of saying this is what it costs? So a lot of general contractors do that. I have a client right now that told the general contractor she doesn't want an allowance. She's going to go do the purchasing. And it just simplifies it and makes it easier. Because then her and I now are pulling together all the pricing. So once I pull the pricing together for her plumbing and all of her materials, and then she's got the GCs um, total, then she's going to know her upfront of cost. Which makes a lot more sense because as a it lender, does. if I'm going to lend somebody money on these things, I'm not lending money on some, on, on a, a whim. But 80% right? of these general contractors will give an allowance. Wow. And sometimes people think the allowances are great till they actually start shopping and realize in today's world, those are not standard allowances. Now, one of the things I've, I've seen recently, and I don't know if this is nationwide or if it's just a California thing, is that... The subcontractors, I'm, as a as the the homeowner, mm -hmm. I'm responsible that the subcontractors get paid, even if I pay the general contractor. I think that's the way it is. That the subcontractor, if they don't get paid, they can put a lien on a mechanics lien on the property. Correct. So I have to be careful of that too, don't I? You have to be very careful. That's why I say make sure you know who you're hiring. Don't just you know, go through word of mouth or because, because you belong to a church group or an organization and this guy says, hey, Sam's wonderful. That's great that Sam's wonderful, but do some research for him. And my other thing too, is if you have an older home and in a lot of homes in California in older areas. Continuing our conversation with Kathleen Garrido, KG Interior Designs with us, protecting you. A lot of times with Kath when Kathleen comes on, we're talking about things that you know, are just foreign to me. We're talking about making a house look beautiful or making your condo look beautiful and 
you know, I know it, my, I know mine's beautiful when my wife tells me it's beautiful. So that's how that's my extent of my knowledge here. Uh -huh. And Kathleen's a great, great resource for making mama happy. But today we've been chatting more about, you know, scams and how how to keep actually the, the, the items that we're talking about today are really I don't want to. Uh, well, I'm going to get in trouble anyway. So what the heck? There, there are things that would be more meaningful to me because I generally take care of the numbers. My wife takes care of the the beauty. And, you know, I'm the beast. I have to take care of the numbers. And boy, would I look like a dumb idiot if I wasn't listening to Kathleen Garrido and paying somebody too much of a deposit. And then they ran out and I didn't get the work done for my wife. Right. So before the break, Kathleen, you started talking before I rudely interrupted about older homes and, and, and doing some work on older homes. Yeah. So homes that are like 20 plus years old, um, you know, you a lot of say that it takes 20 to be old. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Josh, I guess you're old now, according to uh, Kathleen, because I think you're over 20. Oh, I didn't say that, Josh. Um, <laughs> but homes in, in general, especially track homes that got put up so fast, you know, there are some defects that we find. The biggest thing I tell my clients is make sure you have five to 10 to 15% saved on the side. Uh, for anything that might come up. So examples of things that I see every single day is that we open the walls up and we find out that half the copper pipes are not put in the right way or they're going to have leaks shortly and we end up having to repipe. Um, another issue is here in South Florida, especially our homes are built from cylinders. Okay, so the concrete block. I had a house and I put it on Instagram too, where on the bottom of the window, instead of it being all whole cylinder, they took pieces of brick and chopped it up and stuck it in the window. Well, what did we have to do? We had to tear out that window and redo the whole structure. So there's so many things that happen with the, the way homes have been built or because they're just so old, we don't see what happens beyond the walls. And um, oh, you're way out of my league right there. I have no clue what any of that means when you're talking about doing the stuff around the world. But I, maybe I'm going to throw something at you that sure. many of us, many people like me, Josh might even be in on this one too. You buy a house that's 20 years old or 25 years old. Yep. Is there something that I have to really worry about when it comes to, you know, my electric panel or oh. my wiring? Because I've, you know, Ooh, that's I've you. Got, We've got, you know, uh, in our house, I think we probably got seven or eight computers going and, uh -huh. and every TV's got now got it is connected to the, the internet. Do I have to watch yeah. out for that? So besides the plumbing, all of the plumbing, I would watch out for the electrical as well. That's always a big factor. It's always the box that runs us a lot of money rewiring that box. Uh, sometimes the amps, you know, you have, and I, here I go, probably a little high level, but, you know, you have the seller of the house added all this stuff illegally and now the amps aren't enough for the box, the circuit box. So you have to add more, you know, it's just those additional costs when you have somebody, a general contractor come in that you have to be ready for. So if you're doing like a 200 K remodel, I would have 30 or 40,000 just in case something you're, you're going to need to fix and repair. Cause the last thing you want to do is put a bandaid on it and then remodel your entire home. But upfront costs do happen, and I always like to warn everybody as well. Yeah, it would be really, really uh, lovely because I've had this happen. It would be really lovely. You go and you remodel something, and then all of a sudden one of those copper pipes gets a pinhole in it, and you wouldn't realize a pinhole, right. how much damage a pinhole can do. Right. And, and, some, and sometimes it's better just to take another ten grand and do some PEX. PEX is the plastic plum that all the builders use. And they seem to have a pretty decent life, although we don't have a lot of history. You know, we don't have 20 years of history using it, but that might be a better bet, you know, so that you don't have the pinhole leaks. Now, I had uh, one of the leaks, I had a plumber come out and, and we were just kind of putting a Band-Aid on. He actually put a pipe inside the copper. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that done much? No. Okay. That's probably a Band-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, probably was it. Probably was a Band-Aid. Wouldn't be, yeah, something I recommend long term. You know, but it, but it, you know, like it is a Band-Aid. So if you're not doing that remodel and you need to get something done quick and, and inexpensive, correct. If you don't have the money, there are certain ways. But just know it's a short term. Not, you know, yeah, you not, know. And and he came. He was very upfront. He said that you know it's going to diminish some of your water pressure and because you're making mm -hmm. it, you know, putting a. A pipe inside a pipe so obviously the inside pipe is smaller 
Right. Right. So you're not getting as much pressure going through there. What are the contingencies that you see that are most often missed? As far as? Well, things that, that I may not know. You know, I, I, we talked about, you know, plumbing that, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm doing a big remodel, mm -hmm. one of the things I, th I think I mentioned to you, I thought it was fascinating that I, I, every once in a while, my wife likes watching these DIY shows. Right. Or the flip, flip and flop or flop and fix or something like that. <laughs> yes. And they, they go in there and they say, okay, we're going to you know, take out a wall and put a bed, bedroom in or a bathroom or whatever. Right. And all of a sudden they say, oh, we didn't know that we were going to have this problem. We didn't know we were going to have this problem. We didn't know it was the retaining wall and we can't, we now have to put a beam in there to support the, the structure. You know, there's so many what, what ifs. Here's what I here's what I recommend, and this is always successful with my clients, is we take our just take your time. Don't be in a rush to do a forty or hundred thousand dollar remodel. Take your time, hire the right people, get all your numbers up front so you're not broadsided and you know that you can stay within budget. And part of that budget is going to be that ten to fifteen percent uh, contingency fee that for the unknown. Correct. Yes. Leave yourself some wiggle room because if your remodel is super tight and you have nothing else to play with, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter if your house is brand new or not brand new. There's going to be something that comes up that they it's, find. Something's going to come up. And, and the other part, even if it's not, even if it's not an unknown there, mm -hmm. we find a lot of times I, I hear this, I'm sure you hear it more is you say, okay, I'm going to remodel the kitchen. And then Oh yeah. Now the dining room doesn't look so good. So now I've got to start doing that one too. Right. Or they remodel the whole house and they're like, you know what? I'm not going to do new doors and I'm not going to do new molding around it. So when we get all done, you look at it and it looks like old doors, old molding. And you know, you should have just taken a little bit more to just do it all right. So you've got an eyesore right there after you, you did this beautiful job and right. it's overshadowed by the eyesore. And a lot of times, you know, people don't have the monies to do the whole thing. So we always come up with a plan. What is most important to them? What does everybody see? And then we do it in bite size. And some of my clients I work with for 10 years or five years. And, you know, we do the kitchen first. And then I know next year we're going to start on this area. And we just do it in, you know, in bite sizes. So it, by the time you get to the last area, you're going back to the kitchen again. Not quite yet, but not quite yet. <laughs> Great information. I appreciate you coming on with us, You're Kathleen. Welcome.